Referee Mike Ortega from the United States. Haven't seen him in action much before. The last Puerto Rican to fight Prince Nassim Hamed was Daniel Elicia, and he's the only man ever to have Nassim on the floor. Badillo says, I am the best featherweight in the world, and I will prove it here. Let's see. Talk is one thing, action's another. What happens when he feels the power and speed of Prince Nassim Hamed's punching? That is always the acid test in any Hamed fight. Because fighters who've been resilient previously in their careers, many of them have just fallen to pieces once they felt that power. I mean, he's very, very quick, hits very hard, but he was just carrying his hands a little bit low. That could well be a mistake. Watch Badillo's left hand. That was the hand that put Johnson on the floor twice in his previous world title fight. He lost it on points on the air in the end, but has won three times since that. It's a decent enough test, this for Prince Nassim after one or two unsatisfactory opponents of late. Mohamed starting well with that jab, very relaxed and he's just pumping it out and he's landing every time. And indulging in a wee bit of showboating as well. A little shimmy of the shoulders. It's a form of psychological warfare, of course, with him. Chance of Hamed, Hamed, ringing around this impressive Sheffield Arena with 13,000 fans inside. Rapier-like speed with that southpaw jab from Hamed. Just toying with Badil. But a good left hand, that's the one we've got to watch out for from Badil. As if Naz has a weakness, it is that he sometimes lunges and leaves himself open to the counter. Also, as he lunges forward, that doubles up an opponent's power because he's, he's throwing so much into that. Very rarely goes for it in the first round. For a man with his extraordinary power, he's only had three first round wins in his whole career. The second's his favorite, but he predicts round three tonight. The Dio has got a bruise underneath the right eye, but I think he came in the ring with a black eye. Yes, and, uh, he came in with a little marky, and it looks as if it's just swelled up rather quickly. His trainer says he was born with it. I think I've heard it all now. <laughs> well, Hamed won the round behind his jab. Yeah, he, he's showboating early in the round, but also he was using his jab to very good effect, using it from long range, and it worked well, and that just loosened him up a little. There's the shoulder shift. There's the attempted left-hand counter from Badia. It didn't really land. I'm not showing good reflexes there. Here's the third round. I think both of them know that this is the round that Hamed predicted. Let's see what happens. He'll go right through the gears here, Hamed. I'm sure of that. And already he's landed with two good punches, the right and the left. Got a lot of respect for Badillo. He watched videos of him and said he thought he was among the best opponents that he'd faced, judging on that video. Ooh. Really got some meat into that right hand. Badillo's on the defensive. You get the feeling he knows that a, a big attack from Hamed is on its way. Hasn't happened yet. A bit like the phony war. Hamed 
taking his eye off the deer once or twice to catch the eye of somebody at ringside and just looking outside the ring. The Dio you sense is maybe just waiting for one moment when he can explode a counter punch and test Nassim's chin. Yes, he's been very cautious himself. He's not foolish. He's not running in to Hamid, trying anything silly. He's just trying to play Hamid a little bit of his own game and make Hamid lead to him. Still just working almost exclusively with jabs. And he does have his way of throwing other punches from crazy angles, particularly that kind of corkscrew type uppercut you saw it attempted there. There's a left hand, that's rocked for Dio. Then a right as well. He's got 45 seconds to make the prediction come true. Oh, oh cracking right hand. He's starting to move up the gears here, and that's good stiff right hands going in. He's picking the punches excellently. Terrific work behind that southpaw jab tonight from Hamid. I've rarely seen him work behind that so well. Yes, you maybe think he's, he's using the jab, working the jab so well, because he has got respect for Badil. Looks like a bit of blood somewhere around the left eye above it of Badil. He's looking, beginning to be marked up around the face. You cannot take jabs like this and seem to get away with it without facial damage. Well, he didn't do it inside three rounds this time. But I think, to be absolutely fair, Prince Nassim Hamid took the view that, hey, there's a professional job to be done in there. Never mind the prediction here. This fellow's OK. There's a cut underneath the right eye, and I think there's another cut above the left for Badillo. The work in this round was all good from Hamid. The jab was excellent. But Dio, I think he realized what round it was and he tried very hard to be on the defensive. Well, 18 of Hamed's victories, 18 out of 27 have come inside three rounds. So Badillo's done better than most already. But he's scarcely existed in this contest as an attacking force, as yet anyway. He's already shown a bit of resilience, though, hasn't he? Yes, he's had to take some, some good punches, but he hasn't really, I mean, as yet, hasn't really unloaded on Badillo yet. So I don't think he's really felt the, the full force of the Hamed punches. Just for once, Hamid was out of range with a jab. In its way, this is a nice, cool, composed display by Hamid, isn't it? Yes, it is. There's nothing really erratic. He started with good boxing. Just starting to, to pick up the pace a little bit. But you're trying to go with him, but made to miss widely by Hamid. Are we going to see a push from Badillo? He knows he has to try something differently. Hamid showing tonight that he can box a bit too. There's always a danger with ferocious punches like him that they just always go for the blast out and then become psychologically affected when they're in a longer fight. Yes, well, it doesn't look that way at present. He looks very relaxed. He's boxing well behind the jab, and there's very little coming back from the deal. Very patient Hamid here, waiting his chances, trying to work his openings. Impressive, really. Reminds me of his performance against Tom Johnson. As you can tell, he's got a good deal of respect from the deal. Wait, 
Another ramrod jab of sickening power. Because he turns that jab into an uppercut from long range very well. Very hard punch to defend against. He's getting marked up, busted up around the face. Now, Padillo is being picked apart, just bit by bit, like a slow water torture, only far more painful. And Hamed, look at, look at the way he's trying to eyeball Padillo, psych him out. At this point, it's all Hamed. He's boxing very well. Good punches going in there. But his jab has, has still worked so well. That's been his, his best punch. A few of the punches just missing. Ten seconds, corners. Look at that. 31 jabs landed to eight by Badillo so far. And I bet he's only thrown about 33. This is the fifth round, then. Now, it looks here as if he's decided that he's going to get the argument finished. Now, that's not a knockdown. Just rested Badillo down. A lot of the crowd sitting at the back thought it was, hoped it was almost, but Badillo is still there. But I think there's a slightly dispirited look about Badillo just at the moment. Well, he put so much into that. Hamid, that the momentum almost sent him crashing it into Glenn's seat. <laughs> that would have been a surprise, would it, for both of us? That would have probably hurt, too. <laughs> That's how I've got it at this moment. Everything so far to Hamed. I don't think as many would argue with that. Huge jab. And now he's going through the razzle-dazzle. dancing while they're clinching. Hamid, watch the uh, use of the shoulder. Again, that right hand working so well, and this is a very confident Hamid. Now look at this, I think he's trying to do all this for the Sheffield fans, he's playing to the audience, trying to taunt Paul Padillo, who's taking all this. Once or twice in the past, Hamid has taken some stick for trying to humiliate his opponents in the ring and he certainly went over the top against Belcastro a few years back but I don't know where is the line between the kind of thing Ali and Sugar Ray Leonard used to do and it becoming bad taste the mind games are part of it aren't they very much so he's, he's trying to dazzle Badio with his antics as well as his, his speed of hand speed of foot and Badil just doesn't know what's going on. He looked a little bit of a dejected fight as he went back to his stool there. Well, that was accidentally a two-minute round, we reckon. That was a minute light, that round. Well, I think even the timekeeper's getting a bit distracted by the razzle-dazzle of Nazim Hamed. He just wanted to... He's trying to impress. He's trying to give the, his Sheffield public a uh, show. And Badil just does not know where the punches are coming from. Well, this was something really from the dance floor, wasn't it? The crowd reacted to it. They enjoyed it, and he played a little bit more for them. Sixth round, touch gloves at the start of it. There's plenty of respect from Hamed. I think he's shown that already for Badillo. He rates him, I think, a few notches above some of the other people he's been in the ring with of late. Well, he still had not boxed most of the fight at long range and used his speed, used his reflexes. He hasn't been too keen to go in and really mix it up and look for the knockout. He's just, just bit by bit trying to take Badio apart. <laughs> oh, there's that uppercut, which is not really an authentic uppercut. It's the corkscrew one. Like it's travelling up a winding staircase. There's a solid left hand and the jab. Ramrod 
right into the face of Badillo. Badillo just can't do anything with him, can he? Not yet. No, he can he find an answer? It's all very much one-way traffic. You just feel as if the strength's starting to drain away from a deal. Marked up around the eyes. Must be feeling a bit dispirited and dejected. I wonder what's going through his mind. He won't have faced anybody like this before. In that respect, Hamed is unique. Right, left hand gets through from Badillo. A rare success for him. That was a good shot that rocked the chin of Hamed, but he, he took it well, and I think he may just get down to business a little bit more now, Hamed. And then a right hand from Badillo. Just reminders to Hamed. Inside the last minute of this sixth round. Oh, it's a great right hand as well, then the left to the body. But I told you this guy had never been stopped or floored for Dio. And I think a lot of opponents would have fallen apart by now under this barrage. Because every, even the jabs are thrown with evil intent, aren't they? Yeah, but every now and again, but he's just in this round through a couple of punches just to remind Hamed that he's still there. And still has to be that little bit careful, that little bit wary what the deal can do. Last few seconds of the round. Patillo beginning to throw a few more. There's another huge jab. Hamed still looks very, very cool. There he tries that long-range uppercut again. Doesn't quite connect that time, just, just catches the edge of the chin. But there's that good left hand over the top from Badillo. But Hamed took it very well. Second round, round seven. This is the seventh round then. Into the second half of the fight. So far, it's basically just been a kind of boxing masterclass, really, by the champion. Yet more damage to the face of Padillo. And he certainly wasn't born with all those cuts. Oh, and a success at 46% for Hamed. Ooh, right hand from Padillo. 92 punches. Left his chin out to dry a bit there, Nassim, and the reflexes didn't get him out of that one. But when Badillo does land, he's taken the shots. Fair and square, no problem. They don't get careless. He's still obviously a little worried of the deal. <laughs> Left hand there. And the referee was trying to leap in just to have a quick word. Hammer through another one. But Dio, not too happy, took another big left hand. This fellow is durable, but even he was wobbled by that. Then a right. Blood coming from his nose. This could be the finish now. They want to stop it. But Dio's corner want to stop it. They've rescued him. They don't want him to take any more of this. And Prince Nassim Hamed retains the WBO Featherweight Championship for the eighth time. And I thought that was one of his most impressive performances. Here's the end again. I thought that the corner were, were good here. They were looking after their man. He took a lot of heavy punches. Look at his face. He's, re he's really beat up at this point, and I thought that was a good gesture from the corner. They've got to look after their man. You know, that's their interest. He's there. He did the best job he could. He put up a good, stern test 
but he was outclassed from the very beginning. His corner recognized it, and they weren't about to see their man flattened, and I thought that was very good from their corner. Ladies and gentlemen, following the indication from the red corner that the challenger was no longer able to continue, referee Mike Ortega steps in and calls a halt to the bout. The time, one minute, 37 seconds of round number seven. The winner, and still the undefeated WBO, featherweight champion of the world, Prince Nazir.